Welcome back to Football Daily, ladies and gentlemen. We are reacting to a huge match between Portugal and Switzerland in which the Portuguese came out 6-1 winners. A stunning performance. I'm joined by Doogie Critchley and Patrick Van Straten as ever. It is actually Portugal's first quarter final they've made since 2006. And my God, were there some big decisions made by Santos today, Doogie. But they were the right decisions, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Everything came off. Yeah, you went with Diogo Dalot at right back. Jair Cancelo wasn't on the pitch. Dalot ended up with an assist. But the big call, of course, was Gonzalo Ramos, 21-year-old Benfica striker, starting ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo. And boy, did he deserve his spot. Did he win that back? Three goals, one assist. Uh, becoming the first player to score a hat-trick in the knockouts of the World Cup since 1990. <laughs> becoming the first player to score a hat-trick on their first start in a World Cup since Miroslav Klose in 2002. And we know what he went on to achieve. And some of the finishes were absolutely spectacular. I thought the little chip was brilliant. I thought the powerful first shot angled into the top left-hand corner was excellent as well. And this was a Portugal that I just never thought I'd witness under Fernando's, Fernando Santos. Sorry, So energetic, just breaking through mm -hmm. midfield at will. They were absolutely excellent to watch and ended up routing a very poor Switzerland. Yeah, I have to say, Portugal, I thought, were absolutely phenomenal on the night. And I do think it was largely down to the fact there was no Ronaldo. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like the attack was all kind of blending together really nicely. But each of those individuals had a very good performance, those individuals yeah. in the <clears> front four but it felt like nobody was getting in each other's space, like everybody was working together. I mean, Ramos got six shots and got his hat-trick, but he also created two chances and got an assist in this game. Joao Felix, it felt like he could go where he wanted without worrying about getting in the space of, you know, a legendary star of the national team and was able to kind of run the game as a result. Mm. And Bruno Fernandes, <laughs> OK, he may not have the top-line numbers in this match that, that Felix had or certainly that Ramos had, but it felt like he was the heart of everything good tonight. And yeah. whenever you have Ronaldo in there, you do have to make certain allowances for him. You can only have so many guys taking lots of shots, so many guys trying ridiculous dribbles. Um, you can only have one guy you funnel the ball towards for shots. And in this game, it just felt like everything blended. And, and Santos must be delighted that he pretty much got a one game uh, kind of validation of all his all his ideas, all his choices, and really of a process that should have happened with the Portugal national team maybe a couple of years earlier. Yeah, as good as Portugal were, and we will continue to talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, I do want to just touch on Switzerland, who I thought were extremely underwhelming. They, they, yes, they scraped through the group, and they always seem to scrape through the group, don't they? And they did scrape past uh, uh, Serbia and, you know, lost to Brazil. But I, th I just thought <clears throat> on the night, miles off their standards and Bolo 13 touches what did you think yeah very very poor I mean they haven't made a World Cup quarter final in 68 years and on this showing it's going to take a lot longer than that to be honest I thought they were they were atrocious really and we'd seen them in the groups you know perform pretty well defend pretty well they only lost 1-0 to Brazil uh, they beat Serbia in that very close yeah. encounter as well they shipped some goals <laughs> in that but they didn't look nearly as poor as and Nico Elvedi being left on the bench felt like a big call. I actually thought he performed pretty well in the group. Fabian Schaar didn't have his best game. And Jan mm. Sommer, who's been so consistent for, for Gladbach for a number of years and so great in this tournament in the group stages, wasn't at his best either. And it just felt like that core of the side is their spine and their best players are all down that spine. And they weren't really able to affect the game. And Mbolo was very, very quiet. Yeah. Um, as you say, only 13 touches in that first half. So, yeah, they'll be going home and, you know, <coughs> considering... Their, their sort of futures of, of some of those star men. But luckily, that core are, you know, have got at least another tournament in them in 2024 in Germany, I would say. 68 years now without a World Cup quarterfinal for the Swiss. Uh, but Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm bringing it back to him because, you know, everybody's talking about him online. Correct decision to leave him out. But does he then come into the next game? Do you then start him in your, in your quarterfinal match? I think it probably depends who you come up against. You know, I think I think that you don't want to necessarily get nailed into like one particular eleven. I Morocco, think it's going to be Morocco. So I think you, Morocco. yeah, and I think you want to pick a team that you think is going to in, work in one of those mm. games. And you can imagine if they play a deep block that maybe Ronaldo is an interesting weapon. Though Gonzalo Ramos, huge in the air, phenomenal yeah. record in Portugal. Um, <clears throat> I kind of feel like it's extremely hard to justify dropping any of these players. They've had a phenomenal game. They couldn't possibly have done more. I think you run out the same thing again. And at least you know you do have Ronaldo off the bench. 
if that's something you want to do late in games. But frankly, they've already got one veteran who's providing an aerial threat in this match, and that was Pepe. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I would run out the exact same side. My voice is literally shot to bits. I'm not going to talk too much during this episode, but I would definitely start the same eleven against Morocco, who are an extremely energetic, physical, incredibly astute defensive outfit. I think the ability that Felix and uh, Bruno to pull players out of position will make mm. it really difficult for Morocco. I think with one centre point, it's probably easier for the Moroccan centre-backs. Yeah, I mean, he didn't look particularly... He wasn't atrocious when he came on by any means, but you could see the drop in quality. Gonzalo Ramos was so much more agile and yeah. connected to the rest of the players around him. Ronaldo did have that offside goal, but he was so far offside, it's like he knows that he doesn't have the pace anymore, so he's always maybe pushing it a little bit too far. And in terms of his sort of standing within the game, I do feel like we've got a bit of a responsibility as part of the media. Like, we've created sort of what he's become. Like, for years, yeah. we, we sort of built him up as this sort of god. And this is a guy who's got probably the biggest ego in one of the biggest egos in the world, let alone in sport, who's defined himself by being the best, and he really has struggled with this drop down in quality. He is just not the player that he was four years ago, let alone eight years ago, let alone mm. in, in his prime. Uh, and he's really struggling with that drop down to reality. And for Fernando Santos, who you know won Euro 2016 with Ronaldo pretty much as his captain, pretty much the manager when he went off in that game, for him to drop him in a last yeah. 16 game, the guy who's been most loyal to him in his entire career, massive, massive call, and it was completely vindicated. So I don't know how you can start it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the first time he hasn't started a major tournament game since 2008. He's only had one shot on target right. this tournament, though, and it kind of does prove Eric Ten Hag's thesis of, you know, we are potentially a better collective without him, as a lot of other people have been saying. Uh, I want to touch on Joao Felix as well, because there was big news breaking today, wasn't there, from Atletico Madrid. I'm going to read you a quote here from their CEO. He says, Joao Felix is top level, but because of his relationship with Simeone and game time, we feel it makes sense to consider potential bids to sell him. So that dropped on the eve of the game. He then went out and produced a stunningly good performance. If he is to leave in January... Let's get some potential destinations going. Where do you think he could go, Pat, and where would suit him? Well, I mean, of course, the major links at the moment are to Manchester United. And you can kind of see that. Um, whether he has the physicality to run that front line is a, an interesting question. Mm. But what he certainly has is the versatility in his game. He's comfortable dropping deep. You could imagine him dovetailing really nicely with Rashford, moving into those middle spaces and allowing Rashford to cut inside. In a way, I thought that his performance tonight was quite reminiscent of the performances we've seen for... Uh, for Arsenal from Gabby Jesus this season, somebody who's actually stitching things together, who's deceptively strong, who's able to dribble and pick a pass. Um, so maybe something like that, but also equally, if United were to go and poach Victor Simon from mm. Napoli, then you could imagine someone like Felix going there because he's extremely <clears throat> efficient in possession. He's an unusually good passer for a forward. Um, I would quite like to see him at a club like that where you've got goal-scoring wide men like Kvaraskelia. Um Maybe something like that, but I don't know. He's he's a difficult one because it still feels, despite the fact he's been there for a few years now, like we're we've barely got a sense yeah. of the kind of player he is. He hasn't been that regular a starter. Yeah, it's a bit like Manchester United. I, I feel like Atletico is a little bit of a graveyard for young talents over the last few years. Um, you look at like the likes of Tom and Lamar and things that went there and never really exploded in the way they were expected to. How much do you think he would cost, Ralph Felix? Because I think it's quite stark that Gil Martin has come out and been so open about his willingness to accept a bid and sell him. Yeah. Maybe they need the money. Well, they absolutely do. I think there was a report a couple of months ago that they were willing to sell either Jao Felix, Cunha or Rodrigo de Paul. And it looks like Cunha might go to Wolves. Mm. There's been talk about that or a number of other Premier League clubs are interested in him. To me, he's a, he's probably a better value signing than Jao Felix. I do really like Mateus Cunha. Jao Felix is a weird one. I think this was probably the best performance I've ever seen him play. <laughs> In like because mm, I didn't yeah. really watch him regularly at Benfica, and I think at Atletico Madrid he's had injury issues. He's playing under a difficult manager. He's been in and out the side, but he's just never done it consistently. I've never seen him do this, particularly in a high level game, particularly in a Champions League game. This was in a, a phenomenal display. His body feints, his weight of pass was brilliant, and he looked so happy, and it was great to see. In terms of where he goes next, it's really, really difficult. I think if Newcastle hadn't signed Ooh. Alexander Isak last summer, Ooh. then I'd probably look at someone like wow. Felix. But they've already got Callum Wilson. You know, someone like Juventus, what is their financial situation now? What, what league will they be in? Bayern? I can't see that happening. Chelsea. Bayern again, Ooh. I don't know. Bayern feels like they've just moved away from the idea of that really tall physical forward, although they've gone back to it in recent weeks with Tupa Moting. So he doesn't really seem to be a natural fit there. Chelsea and Todd Bowley, probably stupid enough to pay big money for a player that doesn't really seem like a natural fit in that system either. 
So I could see Chelsea potentially happening, but I'm at a loss really with Joao Felix. Yeah, I think he does smell like Man City, but with well, Haaland through the middle, linked, I, can't yeah. see it, I can't see it happening. I will be very interested to hear where you guys think Joao Felix is going to end up and whether or not you think this Portugal side are better without Cristiano Ronaldo after their 6-1 beatdown of <laughs> Switzerland tonight. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.